so 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 far like we have seen few core components like we have seen set payload set variable then we have seen flow soft flow okay and then we have seen all this choice router and then we have seen transform message and logger okay a part of that we have seen http connector in http connector we have seen listener and requester and socket connector is like by default you know so let it be so these many things we have seen now uh like we will uh go for different topic for few days like maybe two days we will be on different topic and then again we will come back to components okay so what uh like uh, our next topic we are going to cover that is raml file so far whatever api we have developed we develop without raml file but now we are going to develop api using raml file okay so here you need to understand what is difference between api within raml file uh, api with raml file api without raml file so can like uh, few people are learning mules of from like your past stage so can anyone tell me what is raml file any idea Uh, yeah, RAML is a RESTful API modeling language. It is used to design our uh, request format. Okay. Anyone else? RAML is one uh, blueprint for our. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I I heard you. So you say like you said it's a blueprint of our API, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, fine. So now. Uh, first thing, what is RAML file? Okay, to understand this RAML file, first uh, let's try to understand one real time scenario, real world scenario. Okay, so whenever we want to like uh, build our home, okay, so we have to go with certain process. So there is two way. One way, you can directly build your home without any, without doing any prior things still you will able to build your home okay you directly went and you started building your home so that is possible correct and second way we have that is one standard way okay that we should follow that is first we create the map of the home okay we create everything like uh what how many square feet that home will occupy? Then what will be? Uh, how many rooms will be there? How many floors will be there? What will be size of each room and each floor? Okay, and then like where will be door? Where will be window? which direction it will uh, main gate will be there okay everything we used to put in that uh, diagram or map okay so that will be first step then second step what we do once we create this diagram we submit that diagram to our municipality okay and from there we take approval and then we start building our home and then engineer will take that map and based on that map they will create the home. So everywhere like we have same process only. So everyone, I hope everyone familiar with this process. Okay, so one process is there. You can build your home directly. Okay, still you will able to build, but that will not be in legal way. That will not be in proper way. You can build your home. You can live there. Everything will be fine. Okay, 
but that will not be a proper legal way or a proper standard way. So what is standard way? First, we create a map. We submit that map for approval. Once we get approval, then we start building our home. OK, so same way whenever we are developing any REST API, simply we can develop our REST API, how we develop all this API. OK, directly we started building our API and we developed all the API. So this is possible way and there will, be, there will not be any problem. This is working fine. All API we already tested and everything is working fine. So this is one way. And second way is there. First, we will create the documentation of the API. OK. And then we'll take approval and then we'll start developing our API. So second way is same way how we do legal way like uh, or standard way of building our home. So what design document will explain? It will tell the behavior of the home. Where will be door? Where will be window? What will be room size and all? OK, so all those kind of behavior it will tell. Same way, when we talk about the design document of our API, that is nothing but that is RAML file. So RAML stands for RESTful API Modeling Language. So what it will do? It will tell the behavior of the API. Okay. Now coming to behavior, what all behavior it will tell? First thing, it will tell you about resource detail. Okay. So what is resource detail here? Resource detail, you can say location of your API. Okay. So whenever you will develop any API, within that API, within that application, there will be multiple resources. Okay. Let's say we are developing one API. We are developing one application which contain customer and payment related detail. Okay. Then slash customers will tell us it's a customer resource. And within that resource, there will be multiple methods like get, post, put, patch, delete. Okay. And each method will have their own meaning. So that we will discuss now only in, in some time. Okay. So how this design document or uh, design document will tell the behavior of home. Same, RAML will tell behavior of API and where RAML stand for RESTful API modeling language. Now coming to its uh, major component. So first component will be resource. So either customer or payments. Okay, so like that there will be multiple resources. So which will tell the exact location of the API. So one thing will be domain name. Domain will tell in the network where that application exists. Okay. And then resource name will tell within that location where exactly that application is running. So in RAML, first important thing is resource detail. Okay. So in resource detail, we will have resource like customers or slash payments slash. Thing. Okay, let it be for now. So like that, we will have resource detail. Okay, so whenever we call any API, so what all things we define? Whenever we call API, let's say we are calling any one API. Let me take.
okay let's say this is endpoint for api so here you can see first thing is protocol https protocol then this anypoint.mulesoft.com that is the domain and then slash ho okay this is the resource detail okay or or let's take uh, i think uh, we have taken many dummy So this is the REST API. Okay, so it should be protocol. First thing protocol, then domain name. So domain name will tell you <clears throat> in the network where exactly this API will exist. Okay, and then this slash API. Slash API is base path. Okay, base path is not mandatory, but sometime uh, like <clears throat> or not sometime many time we used to keep some base path. Okay, so after base path, there will be resource name activity. Okay, now coming to resource name. Resource name should be always <clears throat> a noun and it should be plural. Okay, let's say you are inserting any record. Okay, customer, you are inserting customer record. Okay, so your resource name should not be inserting. Inserting is a verb. Okay. So resource name should not be verb. It should be noun and it should be plural. I'm not sure activity is uh, plural or not, or it will be activities. But uh, whatever should be plural, that should be here. For activity, what is plural? It's uh, already plural or it's, it will be activities. Yeah. If anyone good in English, then you can tell otherwise. So here, simple thing like uh, it should be noun and it, it should be plural. Now you will say if I will instead of using noun and plural, if I will use anything else, will our API will work? So yes, your API will work. Okay. So why it will work? So just try to understand here. Okay. So there are some. Uh, I, again, I am taking one real life example. So there are some government rule, okay, which you must need to follow. If you will not follow, you will get penalty. Let's say in, uh, let's say you are living in a society, okay, and your government has given some instruction or us government has some rule, okay, you cannot like do this or whatever is there. So if you will not follow that government rule, then you will get some penalty or you should get some uh, disturbance, like you will get some problem in short. Okay, so those rule you must need to follow. And after that, when you are living in society, there are some rule which is made by society. Okay, which which is made by society to have a better life. Okay. Those are not such a rule. If you will not follow, you will get penalty. Okay. If you will follow, then everyone in society will have some, like their life will be smooth. If you will, let's say loudspeaker, like a government rule is there. You cannot uh, put loudspeaker volume after this certain range. Okay. At after this time, but in your society, to make better life, you made some extra uh, additional rule. Okay, we will not. Uh, no one will uh, run this loudspeaker after 5 p.m. Okay, 
so other like other people will not get any kind of disturbance within the society so one rule is by government which you must need to follow otherwise you will get penalty one rule is made by society which you should follow to make better life okay so same way in ramal whatever things we are defining or in rest api whatever things we are defining those are standards those are not a rule like government if you will not follow then you will get penalty even if you will not follow your api will work but that will if you will not follow standard then it will create some kind of problem for other okay so everyone has understanding this resource detail as per standard resource detail should be noun and plural and if you will start using something random that will create confusion for other people okay hope everyone getting this in rest api whatever standards are there those are standards which is made by api governance team to like make everyone life easier okay so api governance is nothing but there are set of rule to make or to understand api easier okay so as per api governance whenever we are defining any raml file the resource name should be noun and plural now everyone clear on this yes sir so i have one document for api governance okay especially for mulesoft i will share later on first uh, let me explain everything i will share later on so whenever <clears throat> you will have free time just go through that document and understand everything but i think uh, at this moment you people are in early stage so maybe after uh, in between of real time project just remind me so once we will be in between of real time project you will cover many thing at that time uh, let me uh, remind me i will i will share that document Okay, this is first thing. Within the resource, second important thing is method. So whenever we are defining any REST API, so we should define methods. Okay. So method will tell. We like for for any resource, there can be multiple op, uh, multiple kind of work. Let's say we are talking about customer resource. so what all things can be possible we can create the customer we can update the customer we can delete the customer okay so we can do many things with customer either create update delete okay or assert so like that we can do many things so same way list on the action item okay we should give method name if we are going to retrieve the detail from the resource let's say i want to retrieve customer information okay so in that case method will be get so we use get method to retrieve customer information we will use get method if you want to retrieve the resource detail not customer information 
I don't want to make it specific. Let me make it generic to retrieve. Resource detail. OK, so let's say I want to retrieve customer information. I want to retrieve payment detail. I want to retrieve user detail. I want to retrieve login detail. So all these things will be part of. Will will fall inside get method. OK, so when we have this kind of action item, we will use get method. If you want to create a new resource. Then we will use. Post method. To create new resource. We'll use post method. Then if you want to delete the resource. To delete resource, we will use delete method. Then we have put method. Okay. So here we have two method to update the resource. Put and patch. So anyone know what is difference between put and patch? Patch is partially yeah. update the resource. Okay. That is correct. Just for replacement. Just for replacement. So the patch part is correct. Patch is used for partially update the resource. What about put? Then what is the use it to update the resource? If the resource doesn't exist, it will create a new resource. Correct. So in case of patch, we will partially update the resource. Let's say one resource is their customer resource where we have customer ID, customer name, customer address, customer mobile number, and we just want to update customer mobile number. So we are updating the resource partially. In that case, we will use patch method. Put method we will use. To update the resource completely. And if resource doesn't exist, create new resource. So in short, you can say it served the purpose of post and patch both. Post is to create new resource. So this will also create new resource if resource doesn't exist. And patch is to update the resource. So it will update the resource, but it will update the resource completely. So it will update all the detail, name, email, mobile, everything. So this will be like a very favorite interview question where you will get what is difference between put and patch method? Okay. So these are the methods in the ML file. So in resource detail, <clears throat> in resource detail, uh, two things is important. One is resource name and then method. 
So everyone clear on this part? Yes, sir. Okay, now I'm giving some assignment. Okay, this will be a verbal assignment. Everyone need to put in chat. So you need to, everyone need to tell resource name and method name in chat. So first one is, I want to partially update the user detail. Okay, so what will be resource name and what will be method? Hello, sir. Yes. Can I repeat the question once? Yeah. So I want to partially update the user details. So what will be resource name and what will be method? Put in one chat with uh, OK, OK, with one is uh, fine. I think someone else used. So I can see many response. Let me see. So starting from. Vital one is resource user. You should give everything. Resource is user. <clears throat> so first uh, like who is this? Madhu. So it should be users, correct? For user, what will be plural? Users. So resource will be users and method will be patch. So I cannot see any correct. Yeah, I can see this one. So Mr. C. Only one I can see correct answer. A part of that everything is incorrect. One. Vital has given only resource name. That is not complete answer. Yeah, I, I can see only one. I'll try to put everything in one one message. Yeah. OK, fine. So now another use case. I want to delete. Payment detail. So Nagendra, it should be payments, not payment. It's now we discuss now, like it should be noun and it should be plural. Okay. Uh, sir, what, sir, one doubt, if you apply patch method, um, if there is no resource, uh, what we will get? It will, okay, okay. So it's not like uh, we will apply patch method and what will happen in this case. So you should have requirement. OK, there can be case. Only we need to update the partial information at that time you will use patch method. Yeah, OK, we will partially update, but, but if there is no resource uh, like what is output we are we are getting? It will give error, no? It will give error. error. OK, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah OK. Sir. Error means see, see whatever API you have you you are developing you should have prior requirement. Okay, path method you will use only if they will say in this requirement in this this API will be responsible to partially update this resource. Okay, so you should have prior requirement. This API will be developed to partially update the resource. Okay, so you develop the API. Now 
when someone will call your API, you will go to partially update the record, but that record itself is not there. In that case, what will happen? You will not able to update since yeah. record is not there. So you will you have to send error message. Yeah, yeah. In, in the in the place of uh, put, we will we will create the record. If there is no resource, the record will be created. So that first requirement will come and then you will work on that. OK, it's not like that you develop API and then requirement will come. You will okay. you will use put method only if requirement will be. Yeah. If resource is there, update the resource. If resource is not there, create the resource. So you will develop your API in such a way. Okay. If resource will not be there, you, you will create new resource. OK, sir. OK, only. Uh, just give me one. Huh. Yeah, hello. OK, so. Now I think everyone clear on this part, so how we will decide the method and how we will decide the resource name. Next next thing we have that is. Request. So whenever we are defining any REST API, we must need to define the. Request structure. OK. So in request, whenever we are defining any request, we already discussed multiple time. Can anyone tell me what all possible way of passing the request data in, in any REST API? What all put in chat? Everyone put in chat. What all possible options we have to pass request in any REST API? So someone mentioned JSON, XML and all that is incorrect one. That is the format. That is not a way of passing request data. Yeah, OK, so I can see many people has given correct answer. So whenever we are developing any REST API, so we can pass request in multiple format that is. Query parameter, URI parameter, not body uh, payload. OK, body is fine, body is fine. Generally, in MuleSoft, we term it as a payload. Outside of MuleSoft, we term as a body, so anything is fine. And then header, OK, so many. People has given correct answer. So whenever we we are talking about request of REST API, so it will be headers, 
ready params two array params and then last one is payload or body anything is fine both are same only. okay so whenever we develop any rest api we can pass request in this format and we need to define all these things okay so we have to define what all headers you are passing for that rest api we should define what all query parameter we are passing for the rest api we should define what all uri parameter we are passing and we should define what all body or payload we are passing for that rest api so all this all those thing we need to define okay so whenever we develop rest api we have to define all this thing now same for response also in anyone has any query now coming to response part so whenever we are defining response of any rest api so we need to define all this thing but generally in 99% case we will define only payload okay generally response part we don't update the header and all sometime you will get requirement to update response header otherwise we used to send default one only okay so in response part 99% time you will play with payload only what payload you are going to pass in response okay and then fourth important factor is data type underlying data type okay so here what we do we define data type for request and response. So in request and response, we define the structure and then after defining structure, we need to define their data type also. So that will be fourth point. OK. So in this way, we can define any RAML file. OK, so. Not not fourth. Fifth thing is. Security schema. This this part we haven't seen anything so far. OK, so no, don't worry on that part. So in security schema, so whenever we are developing any REST API, we, we used to secure our API. OK, so we can secure our API using multiple security. Policy, OK, like we have OAuth policy, we have basic authentication, we have JWT token policy. We have client ID enforcement. So these all are security policy. OK, a part of that we have other policy. Rate limiting policy in rate limiting policy. We can limit the number of request. Then we have HTTP caching policy. We can cache the data. So like that we have different different kind of policy. And I think uh, it's around 16 to 18 policy we have. And we can develop our own custom policy also. We can develop our own policy also. OK, so in security schema, we will. We can define only security policy like OAuth, basic authentication like that. OK, so in security schema. We define. Security. Policy. Applied. To secure. API. OK. So all these things we have to define whenever we are defining any RAML file. OK. So what next we need to do? So I will give you one YouTube video. OK. Before starting our RAML coding and all in RAML, we have to do small coding and that will be repeated coding. It will not be very difficult. It's very straightforward. So before starting our session for the RAML file, I will suggest everyone I have one video for RAML. Just go through that video and do some prior practice before starting. So when I, when I will explain that, then it will be more easy to understand.
this is the video i will send in whatsapp group okay so this two video everyone need to complete before coming to tomorrow class okay this will give you some prior information and then when we will work on the raml file and when we will do the coding it will be very easy to understand okay hope everyone clear on this part yes sir yeah so development we will start in next class theoretically we 